In this tutorial, we look at another example in which we solve simultaneous equations involving quadratics and linears. So to get started, let me move this question to the side. Now, although we don't have to, a good idea is often to name the equations. So I'll go ahead and call this first equation E1, as in equation 1, and I'll call the second one E2, as in equation 2. The trick here is to use the linear that we have, so that would be x plus y equals to 1, which is E2, and rearrange it to make either x or y the subject. So let's go ahead and do that we can go ahead and state that e2 can be written as y equals to 1 minus x. All I've done there is rearrange x plus y equals to 1 to make y the subject. Now that that's done, we're going to substitute the y we have inside e1, the first equation, by the expression we've just found for y, using the second equation. In other words, we can now state that e1 becomes x squared plus 1 minus x squared equals to 5. Notice that all I've done here is replace y inside of the first equation by the expression I have for y from the second equation. I now open up the parentheses and simplify as much as possible, so that would be x squared plus 1 squared minus 2x plus x squared equals to 5. Simplifying, that leads us to 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals to 5. I now want to make sure I gather all of the terms on the same side of the equation. And for that, I'm going to subtract 5 from the right-hand side. And since I'm doing that on the right-hand side, I have to do it on the left-hand side as well. So this becomes 2x squared minus 2x minus 4 equals to 0. And at this stage, we have a quadratic equation to solve. And we know how to do that. We could use the quadratic formula, or we could attempt to solve it by factoring. And I'll go ahead and try and factor this. So the first thing I notice here is that every single term has a factor of 2. So I'll get rid of that. In other words, I can go ahead and write that this is the same as 2 times x squared minus x minus 2 equals to 0. And this product will only equal to 0 if x squared minus x minus 2 equals to 0. Now to factor this quadratic, I am looking for two numbers we'll call p and q, which add up to negative 1, that's the number multiplying the x we have here, and whose product is negative 2. And it doesn't take us too long to see that if we let p equal to negative 2 and q equal to 1, then that works perfectly. Indeed, negative 2 plus 1 is equal to negative 1, and negative 2 times 1 is equal to negative 2. Using those two numbers, we can go ahead and rewrite our quadratic equation in factored form as follows. x minus 2 times x plus 1 equals to 0. Now, using the null factor law, which tells us that if a product like the one we have here equals to 0, then at least one of its factors must equal to 0, we can go ahead and write that either x minus 2 equals to 0 or x plus 1 equals to 0. So that leads us to x equals to 2, or x equals to negative 1. And at this stage, we have two values of x, which are both parts of the solutions to this pair of simultaneous equations. But we don't stop there. Remember, we're solving for x and y. We still need to calculate the corresponding values of y for each of these two values of x. And to do that, we go back to the linear equation that we have here and calculate y. So when x equals to 2, to calculate y, I use y equals to 1 minus 2. So that would be y equals to 1 minus 2. That's y equals to negative 1. And that's the y-coordinate corresponding to x equals to 2. We now do the same for x equals to negative 1. So when x equals to negative 1, y will equal to 1 minus negative 1. That's y equals to 1 plus 1. Finally, y equals to 2. And that's the second y-coordinate. And we're done. We now have both the x and y-coordinates of both of the two solutions to this pair of simultaneous equations. And we can state our final answer as 2, negative 1, and negative 1, 2. And those are the two solutions. To finish this tutorial, it's worth spending a minute to quickly illustrate what these two solutions actually represent. And for that, we're going to need an xy grid to draw both x squared plus y squared equals to 5 and x plus y equals to 1. And here's how that would work. I quickly draw an xy grid, something looking like this. 
The equation x squared plus y squared equals to 5 represents a circle which is centered at the origin of our xy grid and whose radius is the square root of 5. So that would look something like this, where it cuts the x-axis at square root of 5 and negative square root of 5, and the same can be said for the y-axis, since its radius is square root of 5. We then have this line, x plus y equals to 1. And as we saw previously, that's the line whose equation is y equals to 1 minus x, which looks something like this. It cuts the y-axis at 1 as well as the x-axis at 1. Now the two points we just found correspond to the points of intersection of this line with the circle. And looking at the coordinates that we have along with the sketch I just made, we can go ahead and state that this point of intersection has coordinates negative 1, 2, and the second point of intersection has coordinates 2, negative 1. And there we have it. That's how to interpret the solutions of this pair of simultaneous equations. And that's it for this tutorial.